This is the Manny Matsakis Show with me, Manny Matsakis, where you will gain insight on how to win on the field and optimize your life. This is episode number one. Today, I would like to introduce you to the publisher of the Black Swamp Football Preview Magazine, who is one of the top sports personalities in the state of Ohio, Lynn Grohl. Well, let me tell you a little about about Lynn. All right. Lynn has 17 years as a sports journalist and radio personality here in Northwest Ohio. He's the creator of the Black Swamp Football Podcast. He's also covered Defiance College Athletics since 2004. Uh, tons of experience. Um, one of my favorite people in sports. Uh, Lynn, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Thanks, Coach, for uh all the nice things you just said about me. You're laying it on pretty thick. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff, you know. It's, uh, you know, we, we, we've we've been able to get to know each other the last couple of years, and it's been fun. And, yes. Uh, hasn't even been two years. No, it hasn't. It's crazy. Year and a half. Yeah, it has. And, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, start off, how is this happening? You know, it's, it's funny. Um, you know, each of us have been podcasting for about a year now. Uh, we've learned a lot about podcasting in the process. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we both have uh, our own. We just talked about, you know, your Black Swamp uh, football podcast that you do here in, in this region of Ohio. And, uh, and then I do one with the college here at Defiance College called the Swarm and Shoot uh, football show that we do out. And we both run them pretty much every week. And we've learned about how to put these things together. You know, and what's interesting thing for me is I've had coaches and people in the profession when I go to conventions or, you know, I get an email here and there, you know, they bring up the idea of doing a different type of podcast designed for football coaches uh, and people in the profession, um, you know, and in the game and so forth. And what they could give coaches some maybe out of the box, different type of insights, um, you know, and and we thought, hey, let's make a run at this. You know, and uh, I, I think through that process, um, you know, we we have a shot to do something special. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. I you, mean, you know, it's, you got the brains behind this operation. Well, and... you know, we'll, we'll see where that takes us. You know, but fortunately, <laughs> I have a lot of good friends. You know, yeah, it's like that you helps. Know, there's that an helps. old song, "Friends in Low Places." You know, mm-hmm. well, I've got a little bit of that, and uh, I've got some friends in high places. So that that's what's pretty neat about this. So we should have some country music in the background. We right should, now, yeah. shouldn't we? Yeah. Yes, indeed. You know, um, you know, I. I was fortunate about five years ago, I launched what ended up becoming a fairly popular blog on my website, mannymatsakis.com. And at the end of that blog, um, which I honestly, I hate to admit, I haven't updated in over two years since I left Widener University to come here as the head coach at Defiance College. What I did was I started doing these Zoom calls. And uh, my wife had this little setup where I could um, get somebody on the other side, make sure they were mic'd up right. And it was video of me and them going back and forth. Sometimes we would put video of what they were doing and, and have all kinds of insight. And they were extremely popular. I mean, I had some great football coaches on that. And it, it was just it was just like, hmm. And I didn't know much about podcasting at that point. And then we started podcasting, and I started thinking, hmm, I'm getting all this uh, emails from guys. Hey, how come you haven't blogged in a while? You know, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're trying to, you know, we're in the middle of a, a turnaround in a college football program. And the art of the turnaround is uh, um, basically um, – takes a little bit of time out of your schedule, you know, and, and you try to balance things out. And I sort of, I, I just let that website sit there and I keep getting subscribers almost daily to that without any updates because it's just sitting there on the internet. And, you know, with that being said, um, what we've learned, we've decided to launch this particular podcast, you know, and, uh, you know, I think we all want to get better. We want to be better and learn more. And uh, the underlying theme of this platform uh, that will be coming out is lessons learned. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Can't wait. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. For yes. Us. Lifelong football coach. What, what yeah. year did you start coach? Cause you've been in this business. Mm. 
goodness. a good while. Well, you know, I started, it would have had to have been in the late 80s after I was done playing uh, professionally. Uh, and uh, I started at Barberton High School over uh, near Akron, Ohio. That was my first coaching job. So Bo Schembechler territory? Yeah. Yeah, well, you're a Michigan man. Yeah, so got to bring that up. Yes, indeed. So, uh, yeah, so I started there, coached for a guy that had been the head coach at uh, Slippery Rock uh, University, a guy named Don Alt. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he had left the college realm and took the job at Barberton, and we put together a really nice staff there. And, um, you know, and right there I learned of – it was remarkable. I learned about the art of the turnaround. And we had taken over a team that was three and seven and went seven and three the first year. It was like, wow, to watch a master like Coach Alt put things together in a short period of time uh, was fascinating for me. You know, so that that's how it all started out. So in the late 80s, you know. Yeah. Also founder of the American Football Monthly Magazine. Mm-hmm. Another thing to your repertoire that... You yeah, added? that was sort of neat. You yeah. know, how did what was the genesis of that? How did how did that get started, Coach? Uh, it was it was funny. You know, it was in the it had been nineteen ninety three, and uh, I was the offensive coordinator at Hofstra University, who doesn't play football anymore. But we had some really good players there, and a lot of NFL players came out of Hofstra. It was, it was basically a what would you would consider today at the FCS level a juggernaut. I mean, we were really good. And um, and the offense that I happened to be the coordinator of, we led all divisions of football in uh, total offense, scoring, and, um, and all that. And I had somebody come to me about writing a book on the offense, a publisher. And so I thought about it a little bit, and then uh, it, I had this – like two month interlude, I, I was called from Bill Snyder to come back to Kansas State where I'd been before, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. To be a special teams coordinator, tight ends coach at Kansas State, and um, during that time, because they were in a bowl game and and they had to wait to hire me after everything, and I, I started stewing around in my head like, ah, you know, how can I, uh, you know, do I really want to write this book? I'm about to go work for Coach Snyder, so. Yeah, I took a little bit of money, bought one of the original uh, MacBooks that were out there and just started typing up my ideas. And uh, I decided not to write the book. And um, from that point, I put an outline together for what I thought would be, it's about a 20-page outline, what I thought would be a really cool magazine to help coaches, right? So I move out to Manhattan, Kansas. I meet a guy uh, who was a former attorney and was actually selling clothes. Wow. At, at the fine men's store, his name Barry Terranova. And uh, we, I, I shared this with him because we, we had an early morning, one of those 5.30 a.m. meetings at a coffee house, and uh, I shared the manuscript of it. He comes back to me, uh, literally, he said he couldn't sleep for 48 hours, and then he showed me. That 20 pages became well over 100 pages of him expanding on the ideas that I had. And then he took it. And together we created something special that is still around today called American Football Monthly. So it's, uh, I've always had a passion to uh, help coaches and uh, through a vehicle uh, of educating them. And that was in print media. And you know now here we're doing something similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel we have an opportunity to do something similar uh, via our podcast. Yeah. yeah. And staying in the, in the journalism realm, you also – did some writing for magazines down in Southeast Ohio that yeah. Dolphin developed into what Youngstown, Columbus, yeah, all over, all over. Yeah, we started doing these uh, preseason football yeah. magazines, regional football magazines, which is what you know you're doing right now yeah. in Northwest Ohio. And it was just I just had to find a niche. It was after I'd left being the head coach at uh, Texas State University, and just uh, and there was a there's a couple years or three years there that I immerse myself in being the CEO of that particular company and uh, getting some magazines out there in regions where I was doing a lot of like color commentary on TV uh, uh, with games and stuff. And then also had done, um, you know, uh, a few other things with some TV stations, some shows, regular shows. Um, I did like in Steubenville, Ohio, which is over on the eastern side of Ohio. And um and then I gave that up and, uh, you know, got back into coaching and uh, ended up in the Canadian League for a little bit and then 
you know, it, it's been a whirlwind uh, with all the wonderful people I've been around in yeah. this profession. And, and and I want to talk about some of those wonderful people you've worked with because you have a, a long list of some greats um, that you've yeah. worked with. Bill Snyder, probably first guy yeah. that comes to mind, kind of where you got your yeah. your start at Kansas State in Manhattan. Exactly. I mean, we're part of, uh, I was very fortunate. We had a great staff there. And yeah, and he wasn't the only guy that yeah, right. I mean, you came know, pretty famous. I remember, you know, we're, we're in the staff meeting room, and uh, you know, you're sitting there in the in the meeting room, and there's uh, Bob Stoops and Mike Stoops and Mark Mangino and uh, Del Miller, who ended up being the head coach at South uh, West Missouri, now Missouri State. Um, geez, it, I mean, the list. It, Jim Levitt. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I I don't even want to forget anybody. I mean, there's so many. Dana Dimmel, you know, head coach right now at UTEP, had been the head coach at Wyoming before that. Great football coach. I mean, on and on and on. I mean, you, you've got GAs in the room like Tim Beck, who was the, you know, who's now the offensive coordinator at uh, well, he was at Ohio State a few mm-hmm. years ago, and and now he's uh, at NC State as the offensive coordinator there. You know, just great minds good people and uh you know i learned so much from coach snyder you know he's a hall of fame coach and rightfully so i mean he was the architect of the uh, greatest turnaround in the history of college football yeah and a tireless worker i remember yeah. doing an interview with you maybe last year and we talked yeah. about bill and your first impression of him was that he drank a lot of coffee because he spent oh, you know yeah. almost his entire day at the office yeah he did i mean he, he was a guy certainly led by example yeah you know what he never asked you to do anything you uh you know that he wouldn't do himself. Um, he he was um, a, a man that yeah he did. I mean we always had the uh, high octane coffee going in the morning and about uh, after what other people would have consider like dinner time. Then he'd have the half and half decaf ca- caffeine going for the rest of the yeah. day. Yeah, he was always the first to come and the last to leave. Uh, you're right, tireless worker, but but really understood the mechanics of the art of the turnaround. I mean, he had been part of that with Hayden Fry at the University of Iowa, you know, and then also at North Texas before that. He had fallen to a longtime successful assistant coach that learned from – you know, a fellow just passed away recent, you know, uh, recently, you know, a couple months ago, uh, Hayden Fry, who mm-hmm. who is, um, you know, one of the top coaches ever. Revered, yes. Yeah, in college football. So he learned from him, applied it with us, and, uh, you know, we were young, excited, whatever it took, and, uh, you, you know, we, we were just, you know, worked tirelessly to uh, help Coach Snyder on his mission and mm-hmm. – and that was and and it succeeded. Yeah, you showed me a picture I think one time of what Kansas State Stadium looked like oh, yeah. before Bill got there, oh, my. and then when things really got rolling for him there, it yeah. was it's like day and night. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, and they still call it the biggest turnaround in yeah college I mean, football history, football yeah. sports history. I guess yeah, you could say it was remarkable. And you know, I guess probably the best example I can give you is when I first got to Manhattan, Kansas, as a graduate assistant. Um, you know, I'm turning off I seventy driving down the highway, and it's basically a two-lane road for about I don't know, six, seven miles maybe before you got to Manhattan, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, today, you take that same turn. It's a super highway called Bill Snyder Highway. So that gives you an idea. So the highway is named after him going to Manhattan, and then uh, the stadium is Bill Snyder Family Stadium. So, I mean, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's fantastic to have been associated with him and all the players and uh, coaches and uh, people that uh, made that program so successful. Yeah. And, and another guy that maybe – the younger people will not remember Bill as much as they do this guy, Mike Leach. Yeah. Who who is yeah. another guy that you've had a lot of connections with and yeah. and a lot of coaching oh, experience yeah. with and, and kind of what Mike has done for college football and you know, yeah. he's he's hugely popular. He is usually popular. Now he's usually popular in the state of Mississippi, yes. you know, and uh, I, I was fortunate enough to get to know Mike when he was at the University of Kentucky working for Hal Mummy at the time. So um, what, uh, you know, we got to be friends a few years later. I'm the offensive coordinator at Wyoming. 
he he had taken the offensive coordinator job with my friend Bob Stoops at Oklahoma, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, they were going to put the air raid in, which, uh, you know, Bob's a visionary. I mean, it's all over the Big 12 right now because he chose to make that happen by bringing Mike in. And uh, after one year of each of us being the coordinator at those respective schools, Mike gets the uh, head coaching job at Texas Tech down in Lubbock. He brings on Greg McMacken as a defensive coordinator and me as the assi- assistant head coach and uh, and a whole bunch of other amazing football coaches that I was fortunate enough to learn from there as well. Yeah. You know, you think about those guys. as I mean, I don't know which staff was better. Um, bo- both had their own strengths. I mean, you know, you look at the staff in Lubbock, you've got a guy like Art Browse who was super successful at Baylor mm-hmm. on the field. Um, you've got, uh, on top of that, uh, Dana Hogerson, uh, Sonny Dykes, who's at SMU right now. Jeez, uh, wheeze, I don't, I mean, Ruffin McNeil, you know, who ended up being a maybe one of the greatest coaches East Carolina has ever had, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, had recently been at Oklahoma. And right now he's on a bit of a leave of absence, actually taking his – take care of his father right now. Um, he's just one of the best guys on the planet. And, um, you know, you, you look at those guys and all the other guys there. Dennis Simmons is the off- – who's the um, – uh, receivers coach at uh, Oklahoma. We had a graduate assistant, Bill Biedenbow, who's the offensive coordinator. I mean, he's actually the offensive line coach. Offensive line, yeah. Yeah, right, at, uh, at uh, Oklahoma as well. I mean, the list goes on and on, and it's just uh, just great coaches. And uh, I was just fortunate to hang out with those guys for three years and, uh, and learn from them. And it, w- it was a bit of a think tank there as well. And, and just the way Mike ran the operation there was uh, something I'm very grateful to have been a part of. Yeah. Take me through some of the coaches that have maybe molded you into the coach that you are today. Well, you know, I would say certainly Coach Snyder. Mm-hmm. I mean, when it comes back to it, I think you're my first foray into coaching college football. Uh, you know, I, I think he is he is the primary um, mentor that I have had. And, and, and what's funny is it's not really about the X's and O's you learned from him. It was more about uh, the art of the turnaround. And because every head coaching job I've been fortunate enough to undertake has been a turnaround, just like here at Defiance College. That's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and we've been successful at everyone in a different way along the way because of the things I learned from, from Coach Snyder. Yeah. You know, so he, he's number one. Yeah. You know? what, is, what has kept you in the football coaching business so long? What, what makes it special to, to you? What makes you get up in the morning every morning excited about what you're doing? I think uh, for me personally, it's the opportunity to be around a great coaching staff, good people, uh, working in a um, direction of leadership where we all can lead together to make something special for our student athletes, the guys that we are developing to one, find their life's calling as as they're in mm-hmm. in college, which is number one. That's why you're in college. And then number two, you know, is, is to get them to a point where they can achieve something so much more than they think they can achieve when they're coming in. How we can uh, help them by empowering them to um, take ownership in their life and create something magical as a team by leading themselves as individuals. Yeah. And I think that to me is like, that's what drives me, you know, and uh, in this profession specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing you, and, and I've talked to some coaches, high school coaches in the area that you've helped out, you're more than willing to give your time to try to help oh, yeah. the game and, and them to better themselves and improve, yeah. which is so good to see. So oh, we, I, I, I know people appreciate that about you and you always trying to give back. Well, yeah, I don't... I don't think you can ever move forward unless you're given to yeah. everybody you possibly can. And, and obviously, you know, there's time constraints on what you can afford to do and with your time because you're you're so immersed in a current project like this, you know, because this, this is labor intensive. I mean, our coaches are really working hard. We're all making that effort to do this. But y- you want to find other vehicles out there that can also empower coaches all over the country and um, and and that's what this podcast is yeah. all about. Yeah, you know? yeah. Give the people listening your plans for this podcast. What can they mm-hmm. expect, Coach? 
Yeah, well, here, here's the plan. I mean, I, this I call this a platform. I mean, and, and it starts with this podcast, and, and there are alternating weekly podcasts that we will be uh, putting out there. So this is the, obviously the introductory one, and then every other week from there, what's going to happen is one week it will be an interview with an influencer in football. Now, that can vary from uh, coaches, operations directors, uh, athletic directors, any key people we can learn from. They will be in-person interviews and not uh, – I'm going to stay away from the Zoom call type of interview because I don't I – don't, those, those were great back in the day mm-hmm. when I was doing those. But now um, I want to be in person with them. So I may leave on location. People may come into a studio. And so we're going to do that to give people uh, so much more that you can learn from out there. But I have to be selfish – I'm learning more than anybody else yeah. because I have that opportunity to interview these people. Yeah, and we've mentioned some of the people that are, are going to be coming on your podcast, Bill Beatonball, some of the people yeah. you coached with at K-State, Texas Tech. Yeah, absolutely. Other people, who, who do you kind of foresee? Well, you know, I, I've made some calls out there to, to guys that were on the staff with me in Lubbock uh, who, who we've just alluded to that are more than open. Hey, like, I want to do this, you know, and mm-hmm. I've getting, you know, calls from like super successful high school coaches around the country that uh, have, they have they have subscribed via email to the website. So, yeah, I've got, you know, a significant number of coaches um, around the country that would love to do that. So it's like either when I'm out recruiting on the road, we could set up some type of a deal like what we're doing, or they could come to Defiance and, you know, we can be in a studio and cover those types of things. So I'm excited about what's about to happen with the quality of guests on this particular podcast. Yeah. You're also going to touch on some books yeah. and things like that too, Coach? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I call those – that's the alternating podcast. So it goes from an interview with a coach and then to what I'm going to call right now analysis and application. And what what that is is where we'll take a deep dive into books and other media with a co-host that's got an expertise in that particular topic. All right? So, for instance, let's say I, I say, all right, Lynn, I, you know, you're into this topic. Uh, here's a book on this. Get this book and – I'll read the book and we'll do some research and let's get on here and we'll, we'll, we'll go through the key insights we can draw from that book. And then we would um, banter back and forth about how this may apply to help people that are listening right now on the podcast. And, uh, you know, and, and what's funny is, you know, I got, I have some friends out there that are not football coaches and they're like, oh, I love this because <laughs> I can, you know, get an inside of this and apply it to my business and things like that, which we're going to be applying, maybe applying a business tool to football and coaching and Mm -hmm. and different aspects of this. So that's that, that's the alternating podcast. So from interviews with coaches to analyzing and taking a deep dive into books and media, which is that part of it. And each of these podcasts, every episode, as we go through this, what's going to happen is we're going to wrap it up with more information that I'm going to call, and coaches are like this, your tips and reminders, something that we do with our players uh, toward the end of the week. We may say, here's a sheet of your tips and reminders <laughs> to help you get ready yeah. for your opponent. Yeah, and, right. you know, tips and reminders are something that, um, in essence, are there that some insights I may have gotten from somewhere. Um Take a look at this product or these items, and you may want to try this to increase your energy level, and, and it, it, it will range the gamut, and uh, I think that will be uh, – that'll just be sort of a fun way to wrap up every single episode yeah. uh, with tips and reminders. Yeah. You know? There's also some other good stuff on maniamatsackis.com, Coach. Yeah, and, um, you know, the idea is – Obviously, you know, people are listening to this on their iTunes player um, or, you know, whatever podcast player they've got. So that's the listening side of this thing. Uh, Or maybe, you know, they found our YouTube channel, which is fantastic, too. But the place where it's all put together is the website. And it's and my vision of the website, as you start to see this unfold, is it's going to have other things that you can't get just from listening to this that will that, that could help you if you just 
choose to apply or not apply. You, you're going to learn some things from my lessons in life. And, um, you know, I'll have some blog posts in there that you could relate to and directly or indirectly. Mm-hmm. You, know, uh, you know, I've had some popular blog posts in the past uh, that uh, had nothing, you would think had nothing to do with coaches, uh, but guys would read them and say, Oh my goodness, this so makes sense for me in my life right now. You know, so we'll have some blog posts on there. Uh, you can also access various manuals and PDFs as they're created explicitly for people out there listening to this or watching it. And then, um, you know, from there, you know, the idea is we're also going to be creating some e courses um, that will vary in topics designed to help coaches. And people in a profession win on the field and optimize your life. And that's really what this thing comes down to uh, as we create all this. So what do you think of that? I can't wait. Yeah, right. In the words of Bart Scott, right? <laughs> the former New York Jet, yeah. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. Let's make it happen, yeah. you know, or uh, as, uh, <laughs> as, as uh, Jocko Willink, the Navy SEAL, says, uh, let's get after That's it. true. You yes, know? Jocko says that as well. He yeah. does. And one of my favorite authors and people out there that I've been fortunate enough to spend a little bit of time with when I was in Staten Island. He was awesome. But we'll get to that at some point because we will definitely talk about some principles of leadership that Jocko is uh, is um, out there teaching and uh, helping other pe- other people out at all different levels. So excited about that! And you know, I want to thank you, Lynn, for you know helping me out with this introductory podcast. Glad to be here. Yeah, it was an honor, Coach. Oh, I love spending time with you. And you know that. Yeah. So you know, I want to thank everybody out there for joining us on the Manny Matt Sackis Show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes, give us a rating, comment on the show. So all that stuff really helps drive it up in the search engine uh, on um, Apple and uh, the podcast uh, search engine. That, that helps and gets us seen by more people. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel. There's a little bell in the top corner. You can just click that sucker right there and uh, you'll get notifications every time we release the next show feel free to comment on specific shows if you want to and I'll occasionally I'll check those out and we may be um, talking about some of those questions on the podcast and if you'd like to get all kinds of updates go to our website mannymatsackis.com where you will be up to date on all the podcasts with the the audio and the video versions Uh, you'll see those feature blog posts we're talking about so take a minute subscribe with your email it's free to get regular alerts every time we update the website thank you so much